originally the fabrication, a fabrication building for the Vermont Marble Company. And it, the building itself is probably eight or nine different buildings that were built over time. The um, original use as a museum in some sense started in 1933 or so with the Vermont Marble Company using it as a showroom um, for visitors, architects, etc. Preservation Trust acquired, uh, entered into agreement to acquire the collection around 2014 and set up the Vermont Marble Museum as a non-profit board and a nonprofit organization on its own. So it's been since 2016, since it's been operated as a nonprofit museum. One of the biggest ones, I believe, is the, would be the Industrial Revolution, which uh, allowed, you know, the moving, the manipulation, the digging up, the transporting, the milling of, uh, incredibly large items like stone uh, that a human person wouldn't be able to do themselves. They wouldn't be able to do it with horse or oxen. So having the raw materials here in the form of a quarry in this limestone that's in our Vermont mountains, and then having the Industrial Revolution which brought the railroads uh, right probably 12 feet from where I sit right here, uh, just the other side of that wall, the railroad for the transporting of goods and of the product, um, and the uh, the need, the larger buildings, uh, to be able to create a market for that marble. I, I believe it was one of the Proctors, I don't know if it was Redfield Proctor or Mortimer Proctor. Uh, one was the father, one was the son. I, you know what, I think it was Redfield Proctor. And the fact that there were people from all over the world in Little Proctor, it's just amazing. Um, and when you think about what the Proctor, what the Vermont Marble Company did out of Proctor, you know, just extraordinary list of buildings and monuments and graves, um, a huge impact all over the world.